This is CES M M A. Here is the Jim Beam tail the tape in the middleweight division. Chip Mraza Pollard taking on Tom Egan. Chip Mraza Pollard comes in at seven and six, weighed at 185 yesterday, fighting out of Cape Cod Fighting Alliance. Tom Egan, the former UFC vet, he is seven and four, fighting out of Dorchester, Mass, originally from Ireland. Let's send it down to Rick Provost for the official introduction. This is the Jim Jim Beam bout of the evening. It's scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. The referee in charge at the bell is Mr. Kevin McDonald. We begin in the blue corner. He weighs in at 185 pounds. He has a professional record of seven wins and six losses with four wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Plymouth, Massachusetts, representing Cape Cod Fighting Alliance. Please welcome Chip, the surgeon, Maraza Pollard. And fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 184 pounds. He has a professional record of seven wins and four losses. Six of those wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Dorchester, Massachusetts, by way of Kildare, Ireland. He represents Team Egan. Please welcome former UFC veteran Tom the Tank Egan. Three rounds, middleweights. Welcome back to CES MMA 21, uh, 22. This should be an exciting bout here in the middleweight division. Tom Egan, Exciting, you feel the electricity in here for this one? We all know the story of Tom Egan. He fought in his hometown in Ireland. I know in both these guys very, very well. Yes, you do. I've known, I've known Chip for a long, long time. Watched him progress through the years. He's fantastic. What a genuinely nice guy and a tactician in there. And I've, I've known Tommy a long time, a sparring partner of Tommy's for a long time, and this ought to be a great bout. Pollard fought here in 2012 against Keith Jeffrey, a disputed decision. It went to Keith Jeffrey, though Pollard showed his striking ability in that fight. You see it early on here. You see that boxing background, the head feints, the jabs. He really has great technical stand-up, and that's always been a factor in his fights. He has a late, Chip has a very laser sharp and accurate jab, and that's something he does very well. Now, Tommy, on the other hand, Good boxing skills, nice high defense, and you'll see him throw good combinations. But I tell you right now, Chip's got a very quick rear leg, and that jab is accurate. Paul's, Fast. Paulo's had a tough go of it of late, losing his last two. He was fighting at Bellator and Reality Fighting. A loss to Sam Oropesa, which is no uh, no knock whatsoever. Oropesa's 9-2, and two, uh, tough, tough fighter. Absolutely. Well, Chip takes, you know, predominantly Always pretty tough, tough fights. Always fights, that's true. You know? And These Tom guys Egan. are yeah, the same for Tommy. Yeah. Their records are seven and four against top flight opponents. Nice stiff jab by Chip right there. And again, you see that it's quick that quick jab and he gets right out, Scott. And you know, sometimes you want to see combos, but he's so quick with it. Well, it's Chip, hard to do any damage to somebody who backs out so quickly. What Chip likes to do is to keep you guessing on that jab. He'll feint it very well, he lands it very quickly. And then when you bite on the jab, he'll come with that rear leg. And as you saw right there, Chip, Chip trying to dig for the liver. Egan coming off that loss to Harley Beekman in November. That's a tough three-round fight. And another tough opponent as well, Beekman, a bomb squad vet from New York. You see how quick that, that jab is by Chip, and you see how good the defense. Nice straight right hand by Chip. Nice short counter right there by Chip as, as Tommy went into the body. You can see how Tommy's timing and the parrying off that jab, and that's also going to give Chip some timing. And these are both very good strikers, very technical strikers. And again, Chip just a little bit quicker with that jab at the moment. You're right, he does seem to be a step ahead of everything, Scott, and that's been a big factor in this it's, opening it's round. It's two different footwork styles, and you can see how Chip's very quick and rangy with his feet, lots of quick movement. Tommy, on the, hand, on the other hand, is prodding. Now, his footwork is excellent. He's, his feet are underneath him at all times. He's already checked a couple of kicks, but it's a different style of footwork. 
it's the prodding guy against that, you know, a little more active. And again, Chip's a, a 170, he's fought most of his career at 170, and he's coming up to 85, so I'm sure he's, he's a little bit quicker footwork-wise. You can see the head movement and the feints that Chip's doing, trying to keep Tommy guessing. Tommy mixing the legs up a little bit, letting Chip know he can kick too. Nice job rolling underneath the combination Egan did. Nice straight right hand by Egan. Just over a minute to go in the opening round. Chip Pollard, Tom Egan, Pollard in the white and red trunks. Egan in the black and red. See Chip throwing that looping left hook, trying to see if Tommy will bite on it. Don't be too surprised if you see that looping left hook followed up by a rear leg, something Chip does very well. That left hook landed. Yeah, Pollard's certainly doing what we expected him to do, what he, we, we expect him to come out and do often. More active on his feet, more active with his feints and his punches. Egan on the other, on the other hand, a little bit more prodding. A little more, um, I'd say, concentrating on not making a mistake early. Sure, it seems intent on trying to counter punch. But, but you can see how good his defense is there. Look at it right there. He was in a perfect position. Hands were up right where they belong. Defended the punches and the kicks. That's why I'm saying that these guys are both technically excellent strikers. And you see Pollard mixing a kick there too, just to keep him honest. Yep, he landed the first one, went back to it, and there's Egan. Good footwork, good foot position to check it. Nice first round, enjoyable. Very good first round to watch. Absolutely, great action in round number one between Tom Egan and Chip Pollard. Pollard is always letting his hands go. Egan seemed like he's still trying to get the timing down, Scott. Well, I think his time. I think he has the timing very well. He just hasn't countered yet. So Tommy's, you know, he's parried everything very, very well. Good defense. But what I, if, if you had to ask me right now, which way it went, the, the more, the busier fighter was Chip, and it might go that way for this round. Well, no question, we know judges certainly favor the busier fighters, the more active fighters, and that was what Chip was in round number one, so that would seem to go toward him a bit. Now, what can he can do to counter that? Pallet's gonna remain busy nonetheless. Do you just have to stand there and trade with him? No, what you wanna do is not chase Pollard. Pollard likes to move around. A lot of guys have a tendency to chase him, and that's where he'll, they'll get counterpunched. What Tommy needs to do is to cut the ring off. So when Chip's working a semicircle, Tommy wants to work straight lines. Same exact idea, same exact concept as boxing. You got a guy that likes to circle and dance around a little bit, cut the ring off, cut the cage off, don't follow him. And we'll see if Tom Meekin can do that around number two. Paul comes out immediately with a head kick upstairs and a second one. Big fight for both fighters, but especially for Pollard, he's lost three of his last five. He's hit a little bit of a roadblock along the way since the Keith Jeffrey fight here in 2012. It could certainly use a fight to get back on track. But of course, Tom Megan coming off that loss to Harley Beekman could use the same. And one day, Scott, he would love to return to Ireland and fight again on the UFC card if it ever does happen. Well, I'm quite sure that'd be a thrill for Tom. That'd be a thrill for anybody going home and fighting, you know. Same way Doomsday fought in Boston, that's, a, that's just a big deal. First time Megan did fight in the UFC, he admits he's kind of wide-eyed and didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> it happens. And may have been overwhelmed by the pressure of being the only Irish fighter on the card. You see the results of all those strikes by Chip Pollard on the face of Tom Megan. Yeah, Chip peppers that jab really, really well. Very quick. No cuts, just a lot of bruises, which will certainly hurt tomorrow morning. They're like abrasions and stuff, nothing deep. But that comes from, again, a very accurate, quick jab from Chip. He's not sitting on it, he's trying to find distance. You know, he's, he's landing, he's like, you know, you hit that jab, okay, there he is, okay, there he is, and he's trying to follow up with a combination. And again, Pollard back to the jab, now with the right nice hand. Nice stiff right hand there. Really mixing it up well. Tommy needs to, uh, to keep the good defense, but counter now. The second he defends, he needs to counter very quickly. He's allowing Chip to get very comfortable. And that shows in his confidence. You can see Chip 
Look, that's a lead uppercut he tried to come with, lead hand uppercut. That's a confident strike. Nice straight right hand over the top by Egan. He needs to follow those up with a combination. You're right, Scott. He can't let Chip Paul get in and get out too quickly and not sustain any damage in the process. And that's kind of been the reoccurring theme in his first round and a half in this middleweight bout. Tommy, I think he needs to pick the aggression up a little bit. He needs to come forward a little bit off some feints. He, you see great head movement from Egan right there. For, for nice left hook. Now that was Tommy finding his rhythm. Another nice jumping left hook. Well, here we go. Maybe Tom Egan gets some confidence in him. Overhand right, right by Egan lands clean. Now he's getting aggressive and back and Paul it up. You're right. Now Paul may start to backpedal a bit. There's now your Egan, left hook. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly the aggressor here is Scott in round two. Well, as you know, Mike, you've been around the boxing game a long time. Slip four or five punches in a row, and all of a sudden your confidence gives up just as much as if you landed a couple punches. Now all of a sudden it's Tom Egan trying to stalk down Pollard, but Pollard, of course, will go back to that jab if all else fails. That's been his weapon of choice throughout the fight. Egan, Egan poured it on now. Yeah, absolutely. Opening things up here in the final two minutes of the second round. Nice shot to the body by Pollard. Yeah, he's digging the liver every now and again. I'd like to see Chip, if he wants to land that liver shot, to throw the jab first and then go downstairs. Great fight to watch, very enjoyable. If you're a fan of stand-up, you're loving this. Great defense right there by Egan. Those punches were clean and crisp by Chip. Nice job by Chip. I like that leg kick when Tommy started to roll under. Man, this is like the fourth time tonight we said great evenly matched fight. And that <laughs> Pat Sullivan, nice job. This Pat is Sullivan killing. does it again. Another evenly matched bout here at CES MMA 22. Egan trying that left hook upstairs. He's had some success with it. He just needs to he needs to throw a couple of more punches behind it. Egan had that flurry midway through this round where he landed three, four consecutive punches that kind of caught Pollard backpedaling. The action has slowed down a bit more from what we saw in round one. Well, I also think by landing like he did, he he kind of pulled the reins in on Chip a little bit. Where Chip's confidence is still there, it's just not bubbling over. You know, you earn another guy's respect. That's what this is about. No more lead up cuts here. Egan is kind of busted open here, though, Scott. Looks like a lot of the blood coming from the nose. Yeah, it is. And of course, it's just the results of all those shots, all those jabs by Chip Pollard. Well, Tommy slipped a ton of punches here, but Chip's landed a ton, too. That means Chip's thrown two tons. Paul is trying the spinning back kick right at the bell. Not a bad idea. It doesn't land, but another good round, another solid action-packed round here in this middleweight bout. Tom Megan had his moments, but again, Scott, I just think that Chip Paul has been the aggressor and seems to be doing the bulk of the damage throughout the course of the fight. Paul's for a tug that Egan's going to be desperate in this round. This may be a great opportunity for Chip Paul to land a counter punch that could effectively end the fight or at least turn the tide. Well, I, I have to agree with what his court is saying. I do believe Tommy. I would, if you want to give the second round to, to Egan, maybe you could. But we're definitely one round apiece. Maybe two. He could be two down. Sure. If I'm in Egan's corner, I'm telling him he's two down. Exactly. You want to see that desperate all or nothing attitude in that third round. You want to see Egan empty the tank if you are in his corner. For Pollard, it's going to be more of the same and try to get that aggressiveness back. Although I don't think it ever really went away like you said. Chip is, his nickname's the surgeon. And the reason, he's very precise. He's been aggressive. This is Chip's type of fight. This is why you see him doing pretty well. He's very comfortable. This is really played out like an old-fashioned boxing match. Neither fighter get into the canvas at all at any point. Pollard slipped at one point, got right back up, but it's been all stand-up. Yeah, no one's even thought about taking the other guy down so no, far. No, everybody let their hands go. There's there your takedown. There it is. Right in the middle of the cage. Great little single on a twist. 
And now you watch Egan start to go to work. This could be a big difference maker right here. You know, Apollo may not have been ready for it, Scott. Oh, so he, he tried to get up very well. Nice job by Chip getting back up afterwards. Gets to his feet quickly. May not have been ready for that takedown, given the fact that there's been so much stand-up. It may have catch you by surprise at some point. Which was a great, it was a, it was a nice job by Tommy to do that. Nice counter left hand. Oh, it smiles. Well, I mean, Tommy's landing the one at a time, but he's got to put a couple of together. You throw four to land two. Another left by Egan. You're right, Sky. He's got to let it go. He's got to follow that up on a cross. There's the, there it is. Now he's got to come back. Three, two, three. You know, three, two, one, a straight left hand. But you look at how intelligent. Nice. I was just saying, look how intelligent Chip is. Playing his angles, backing out of there very well. And he lands a nice little counter one, two on his way out. Three and a half to go in the fight. Chip Pollard, Tom Egan. We are cage side at CES MMA 22. Mike Ferranti joined by Scott Ream. See, Chip's keeping that left hand very, very low. He likes to come up with that snap jab. He's also kind of messing with Tommy by touching his inside leg, making him think there's a takedown coming. I'd love to see Chip shoot a takedown just to keep everything off balance. It would certainly catch Egan by surprise. You wouldn't expect it from Chip Pollard. Egan trying for that single leg again. And again, toward the center of the cage. Just right where you want to Nice go. straight That's right hand. hand. Chip's clapping and smiling. Now he might be enjoying it, but anytime another fighter kind of smiles, it means you got his attention. Absolutely. But again, that's the one punch. Tommy needs to put more than one punch together. Two minutes left in this fight. I think Egan really needs to turn up the volume. And you watch Pallad use that, that nice counter combination. Just fell a little short, but he hit that single again. Tommy Egan did a great job. And you can see Chip trying to pull him in, pinching his knees together as not to let him get into his guard. Doing a very good job of not allowing Tommy to get position. Tommy steps into half, looking for position here. Another big takedown by Tom Egan. We'll see if he can go to work here, Scott, in the final two minutes of this fight. Well, you're gonna see Chip, you're gonna see Chip look to cross face and push off, try to create space to get up. Nice job getting an underhook. Now he's got the body lock. Short elbows by Egan here rather than punches would be more effective. But Tommy's gonna look to flatten him out. And again, you know, Chip usually fights at 170. I'm not sure when he walked to the cage tonight, but Tommy was more than 185 when he got here. <laughs> Egan doing a very good job of maintaining the your short elbows. Egan going to work here, Scott, in this final minute. Tommy finishes the fight on top and striking. You know, that's it's gonna be very beneficial. If there's a round apiece, that'll be the round. As it stands right now, Tommy's doing a great job, dominant position. Chip is doing excellent and trying to defend it. He just can't get out from under. He does have an underhook if he can switch his hips and try to come out. If anything, Scott, Egan may have taken control of this round with that second takedown on the scorecards, and you're and right. Tommy's also put himself between Chip in the cage, so Chip can't use the cage to get up. Very smart. Chip defends very well against the cage. Egan looking to pass here. Chip doing a nice job getting that leg across the middle to create space. Tommy using, his, Tommy using his four round to keep that head in position. And he, that definitely, in my opinion, the last two minutes with Tommy on top. Nice elbows at the end of this fight. Egan just trying to enter this thing at the final bell. I think Tommy might have at least won that round. And if Tommy won the first, I think we could have a... It'd be interesting to see how the decision went here. Yeah, I agree with you, Scott. It's, it's interesting to see how they may have scored that second round. Egan landed some powerful blows. Whereas Apollo was more of the aggressor throughout the round. Maybe he had uh, more, maybe more of a dominant round from that standpoint. Round one, I think, certainly went to Pollard. Round three certainly went to Egan. So it's Absolutely. that second round, I think, that's going to be the deciding factor here in how this fight goes. Well, I, I think quite the opposite. I think the second round, Tommy was a little more aggressive. I don't know if I'd score the first round. I thought Tommy had a better first round. Okay. 
We'll see how the judges have it. It's it just goes to show you we're seeing two different scoring. Right. You're saying it sits on the second round. Excuse me, you're saying it sits on the first round. I'm saying it sits on the second. So, you know, we both have it at one round apiece minimum. We could be looking at another 29-28 score across the board. Just we don't know how or which direction those scores are going to go in, but that's what it's all about when it comes down to it. But a very action-packed fight. Uh, not really a lot of takedowns until that third round where Tom Egan landed two big takedowns and really took control of that round in the latter stage. Mostly stand-up, which certainly favors Miraza Pollard, and that's the style that he wants. So we'll see how that Tommy wants that stand-up as well. He yeah. just didn't um, I think Chip is more technical at it. You know, I would have liked to see Tommy put combinations together. All right, so with that said, we're going to send it down to Rick Provost. He's going to have our official decision here between Tom Egan and Chip Miraza Pollard. Let's send it down to Rick Provost. Okay, CES MMA fight fans, for the official decision, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Avery scores the bout 27 20. I'm sorry. 30 27. 30 27. Judge Flanagan scores about 29-28. Judge Asmar scores about 29-28. And your winner by unanimous decision, Chip, the surgeon, Moraza Pollard.